Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock. We'll begin a series deconstructing this Fostex 260 multi tracker. Enormous thing. And I've got the camera up really high just to be able to get the whole thing in shot. I won't talk too much about the features. There'll be a subsequent video where I talk about you know, what its relative strengths and weaknesses are. But yeah, I will remark that when you consider this is basically equivalent to the 244, 244 is like that size. So there's all this extra real estate it takes up to do much the same thing. Um, I've just shot some video on uh, 160, which seems to have a lot in common. Presumably it came out at the same sort of time. You can see that we've got three different styles of knob here and one missing. These ones are correct. This one looks like a previous owner got that off a X15 and this I don't recognise. But if you've got a complete one then they're all going to be that sort of a shape. It's really just that and the pitch control that I am expecting to come off from the front. I wonder how easily I can get that off. Yeah, I can pry that off. If you couldn't pry it off, uh, just be aware that's going to pop off when you get this front case off. These push push caps, if you pull them from the front, they will come off, but actually it doesn't interfere with cleaning or anything, leaving them on. So that's all I'm going to remove from this side. Figure out how to get this open. I've never had one of these before. We'll figure out how to get the transport out so you can change belts, how to get all the printed circuit boards away from the chassis so that if you've got any soldering or anything you need to do any cleaning, then you'll have access to that. Also have a look at the location of uh, the various trim pots for calibration. If there's any electrical faults that turn up after I've cleaned and calibrated and tested it, then those will be the subject of a subsequent video. So I'll just stop the camera just now and uh, we'll come back once we've got access. Right, to get this uh, metal case in the back and also the front plastic case off, there's a total of 11 screws like this. Uh, so long, double cap, Phillips heads, wide ferrule. The location of these is marked with this red tape. So we've got three here, two here, two here and uh, another three along there. There's also another one inside, which I'll show you in a second. And then there are two little short wide ferrule screws uh, with a regular cap on them. They go here and here where the yellow tape is. With those exterior ones removed, then get your fingers underneath. This metal plate tips forward at the front here where I'm gesturing with my hand. Um, you can see this lip here fits into plastic slots along this edge. Uh, when you open that, you would still need to remove one more of these uh, longer screws from this post that I've put red tape beside there. With that removed then from the front, the plastic case will come away. First thing we'll do is figure out how to get this transport out. One dead giveaway of a problem here is, see how that um, pinch roller arm will just drop down? don't think that is the correct behaviour. There should be a spring there or something. Maybe that will turn up in the process of deconstructing that. So there are four screws that are holding this transport into the chassis. It's one here, the tip of the screwdriver is, one up the top right corner of this motor, one in the top left corner, and one in the bottom left corner. There doesn't seem to be any cable ties or earth connections associated with those screws. Nice bit of uh, gooey belt residue, so I'm expecting to see some failed belts on the other side once we get this out. And uh, that's roughly what the screws look like. Maybe about 1 to 1.5 centimetres long, wide ferrule, brassish in colour. As I was removing them, this fell on the floor. I'm not sure exactly where it got trapped up, but we've got a spring here. So I assume that's the spring that's come off that pinch roller arm. I'll figure out later on how that goes back. First step to getting this transport separate from everything else will be to detach all of these magnetic head cables from the rear. So we can see from the front, they're passing off to the left of the transport as you look at it and coming through this hole here. These uh, three pin plugs, and that's the connection for the record head. And I'm pulling those by the side of the plug, not by the wires, just because they're rather thin and delicate. And don't confuse them with these cables that are going off to the side here. This is the record playback amp here. So it looks like the bias, and these are the relays that choose whether this record playback head is in record or playback mode, because that head is dual function. And that's all located on one board, and then the actual reproduction amplifier and record amplifier on a separate board. So let me just get this first plug out. 
And then these thinner grey wires, these are the arrays cables and you can see that they're all terminating in the same header. Sometimes these ones are a bit stiff. Just dislodge that with a flathead screwdriver. Again, putting pressure on the plastic, not the wires themselves. And then at a later stage we'll be able to string all of these wires through this recess between this mounting post here and here. Back over on the front side, it still looks like we've got three power and signal cables that are running into this transport. One of which seems to be under this shuttle control board, so two clips here um, and then that will lift up. So this black header here, note how that's folded, that's probably going to be important when we get to the reconstruction stage of this. And then these other two cables, in fact I say two cables, they're both going into the same header, so another black in colour one there. I am not sure you're going to have to do a bit of folding to get that back together. Well, let's see if that is everything this is attached to. I'm probably going to have to pull these cables out from under plastic clips here. I'm getting a lot of uh, decomposed cable in my hands as I do this. Well, it wasn't very easy to get out, but it doesn't look like there's anything else there. I mean, this is stuck. Is there actually enough space under that plastic chassis for that plug to get under there? With a little bit of force, yes. Okay, so uh, the transport is now free of the plastic chassis. As an aside, you occasionally, if you look at forums and so on about this subject, um, see people saying, oh, Fostex is worse quality than Tascam. Although that hasn't been my experience in terms of like the quality of components. One thing I have noticed with these older Fostexes is, is that they're not easy to take apart and put back together. There's a lot more of a rat's nest of cables. I mean, the 244 and 246, are a bit like that but I anticipate it being a bit of a headache to get all this cabling to cram into this space when I get to reassembly and um, look at the state of that that's a really really badly decomposed belt there's bits of it everywhere so I'll need to give that a good clean before going any further I find that isopropyl in combination with paper towel will work quite nicely you occasionally see people saying that you can use isopropyl to clean rubber I'm very suspicious of that just because certainly at this later stage of uh, decomposition um, isopropyl will absolutely melt decomposed rubber so I just use a uh, clear water, water with very diluted detergent if I want to clean rubber, but this by the way is an alcohol swab, an isopropyl alcohol swab, so you know nurses would use it for injections, you see tattooers wiping the transfer off as they work, and you can get like a big pack. I mean like I buy packs like that, about 500 of them at a time, and it's a few pounds here in UK. So I'll come back once I've got some of this muck cleaned up.